Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today following a successful members poll we're having a look at e-readers and the role that Palm played in their creation and popularization. This video was originally suggested by Lazio Garuza Nagy pronounced badly I am absolutely sure who said in his comment please make a video of Moby Pocket Reader as the grandfather of the Kindle app. So here it is. Before we get started, a big shout out to Katie Unlisted and Andre Heyer for your super thanks on my previous video about using a data bank watch from 1997, which I'm still wearing now, having had a few issues with my Xeon tech. However, that's a story for another day. And also we have a new channel member. So please give a big shout out in the comments to Meganeum412 and if you feel like it, go check out some of his videos. He's got quite a few on retro phones as well as playing Half-Life 2. And I'll pop a link to that below. Right, let's get started. Why would you even want an ebook in the first place? Given that books have been around for thousands of years, they're wonderful things, they inspire us, entertainers and informers. They're portable, easy to read thanks to good contrast between the bleached paper and the black inks, they require no power source, are easily shared and are cost effective. The only real downsides are that they take up a lot of space, although that's not always a downside as they are quite nice things to have on display. The weight of an average novel is not insignificant, being around 250 grams or about half a pound. Not ideal for a beach holiday if, like Superwife, you can read a book every day, in which case those books can take up half your luggage allowance. So, for reasons reasons of weight and size, an ebook could be very convenient. An electronic alternative to a book is not a new concept. Bob Brown suggests in his manifesto a reedy, so named to mimic cinema with sound being called a talkie. He described it as a simple reader machine that he can carry around and put into any standard light plug and read a hundred thousand words in ten minutes. I'll be honest, that's an impressive reading rate. His idea was to use microfilm, a backlight and a magnifier. This is a pretty neat concept and would certainly have worked had he had the time and inclination to put it into action. 1971 and the first widely recognized ebook is published on the local network of Illinois University by Michael S. Hart. The first ebook was The Declaration of Independence. Michael S. Hart then went on to found the Gutenberg Project, so named after Jonas Gutenberg, who had revolutionized the printing industry and brought books to the masses. In the same way, the Gutenberg Project brings ebooks to the masses. For an ebook to be a realistic prospect, we need some kind of easy display, preferably with low power consumption. And 1972 sees the first watch released with an LCD screen, the Gruen Teltime. And I've put a link to an article on this below so you can read up about it. LCDs were about to bring a revolution in display technology. 1980, the Sharp PC-1211 is released, the first portable computer, at least according to the wiki article that I've linked below. It has a single 24 character display, it's got 4K of storage, so we're not quite ready for ebooks yet. After this though, things start to progress quite rapidly with Scion releasing the Scion 2 with two lines of display and then the Scion 2 LZ with four lines of display. The thing holding us back at this point is mainly memory storage. Maximum memory at the time is around 32K. You could occasionally get 64, but this isn't going to store anything except a very short book. Of course, you could read a book on even the earliest of computers. However, trying to get comfy in an armchair or snuggle down in bed with a CRT monitor is not going to be easy. From a practical point of view, portability is going to be king. 1991 sees the release of both the HP 95LX, a DOS-based palm top, and the Series 3 from Scion. Both of these have significantly higher resolution screens. They also have expandable memory. So it's now possible to take text documents, simply drop them onto the machine, 
take them with you and read them at your leisure. This year also saw the arrival of the Sony Data Discman, an ultimately unsuccessful attempt at an e-reader using mini CDs as the storage medium. Does Not Compute has done a really good video on this and I'll pop a link to that below. Reading from a clamshell device like a Scion 3 is far from ideal as it usually requires a desk or something to prop it up on. It's not comfortable to hold in one hand. If e-reading is ever going to be popularized, we're going to need a new form factor. 1993 sees Bibliobytes founded. Try saying that 10 times fast. These books could then be printed out or read on a screen of your choosing. They had lots of sections and it was an easy to search library. 1994 sees the founding of a little known company named Amazon. At the time they only sell physical books and this is going to continue for some time yet. 1999 sees the release of the first Palm handhelds, the 1000 and this one, the 5000. The Palm 5000 has 512k of RAM. This means there's now sufficient memory to store a significant amount of text. The form factor and light weight mean that this is comfortable to hold for prolonged periods. And the sharp display means that reading text off here in good lighting conditions is an absolute breeze. Of course, there's no e-reader applications as yet and the Palm OS only allows you to put PRC or PDB files on board so you can't simply copy a text file onto the internal memory. However if you open up Palm desktop you can copy the ebook of your choice under a category of your choosing and it will split that text into small chunks so it will fit inside the memo application. Then simply syncing your handheld will mean you're ready to read whatever you want. When you read each memo simply delete it freeing up space for the next thrilling installment. Memory on these is still limited, but you can now store about half a full novel or several short stories without much effort. The form factor and the sheer popularity of the Pilot 5000 and later Palm Pilot models made reading electronic texts much more common for the general market. 1996 also saw an important patent filed. It was for a microencapsulated electrophoric display. You will all be more familiar with it under its colloquial name e-ink. Even though the concept of this display and its usefulness had already been recognized, it's going to be a long time before it sees the light of day in any commercial application. 1997 and we see the release of Palm's second iteration, the Palm Pilot. Now with up to one megabyte of memory, meaning you can store an entire novel or a lot of short stories and a backlight so you can read in the dark. 1997 also sees the release of the first commercially successful e-reader, the Rocketbook. It's got a two-bit monochrome display with backlight, much like the Palm Pilot, and is backed by Barnes & Noble, who are at the time the biggest book retailer in the USA. It sells over 20,000 units in the first year. However, this is dwarfed by the 1 million units that Palm has sold in its first 18 months. 1998 and Palm release, the Palm 3. Adding an infrared for communicating with the PC or sending files between other Palm 3s, in addition to numerous other OS updates. These handhelds now come with two megabytes as standard and on their 3X, four megabytes. So now you can store more than one full-size novel and put it in your pocket. Not only that, but you no longer have to dump text into your memo pad. Instead, you can use the newly released Palm Reader and it'll save the place in the book for you. Palm Reader uses the new Palm Doc format and it has a PDB extension so you can store it internally on the Palm itself. From here, thousands of books became available specifically formatted for Palm handhelds using this new format, sites such as Memoware. Here you could download books easily and for free to scratch that reading itch. It's from Memoware I downloaded such classics as Dracula, Moby Dick and the adventures of Sherlock Holmes as well as an awful lot of 1920s to 1950s sci-fi which I used to like to read on the train during my daily commute. Being able to operate Palm OS with one hand meant I still had a hand free to hang on since it's rare you could get a seat during rush hour. Sadly the Memoware site shut down in 2014. 
1998, we saw Microsoft attempt to take a slice of the Palm-dominated handheld space with the release of the first cohort of Palm-sized PCs, including this one the Philips Nino. I couldn't find an ebook reader for these, but you can read text files in the memo pad. There is a limit of 256K, but as long as you obey that, you can simply add it to the compact flashcard and read it on the internal software. Adding a few asterisks before saving and closing makes it easy to use the find function to work out where you left off. 1999 saw the prediction of the death of physical books. E-readers were the future and physical books were firmly put in their place in the past. In many ways, e-books do make a lot of sense. They have a lower carbon footprint, they are easy to distribute, and by 1999, we've got a lot of devices capable of reading those books. Combine that with growing memory capacity and where a hundred books might take up several shelves, you could put them all onto a single compact flashcard. Of course, two and a half decades on from those predictions, we are all well aware that physical books are a long way from extinction. Indeed, in 2024, physical book sales made up 74% of total book sales and the remaining 10% being audiobooks. There were plenty of other attempts at creating ebook readers during this time period, including the Franklin Ebook Man. The Ebook Man looked like an oversized Palm 5. Like the Palm 5, it could also sync with Outlook. It experienced some success and had a fairly big user base who created other applications and programs, including a few games for it. Sadly, its commercial success was limited and after being released in 1999, they ceased production three years later in 2002. 2000 saw the release of CE3 and a new cohort of handhelds from Microsoft, now named Pocket PC. They all included the Microsoft Reader, such as this one on the E115. This reader uses the LIT format, which was officially discontinued in 2012. The LIT format has a lot of advantages over the Palm Doc format. Not only could you add bookmarks and search for text, but you could add annotations and highlight text. You could even write on the text itself. The LIT format just never gained the same popularity, whether that was because of a lack of LIT formatted books, a lack of third party support, or whether it was just that pocket PCs were much bigger than the Palms available at the time, so less convenient to read on than the offerings from Palm OS, Handspring and Sony of the time. 2000 saw the creation of the Moby Book format. This is the same format that is still used by Kindle. It has had a few reworks over the decades. The original Moby format, however, ended with an extension PRC. And if that sounds familiar, that's because it stands for Palm Resource Code. That's right, one of the two file types that you can pop on the internal memory of your Palm OS device. In fact, if you take an older Moby file, pre-DRM of course, you can simply change the extension back to PRC, pop it on your Palm and open it in the reader of your choice. Very useful since PRC formats don't exist anymore. In 2001, Palm released the M500 with its SD expansion slot. Now, I'm not saying that Palm were late to the game, but adding a memory card was hardly an original idea by now. Finally though, you could carry hundreds of books on your Palm with you at any time. And in fact, I do still use my M500 as an e-reader. The screen is nice, I like the inverted backlight, don't hate me for it, as it's really good for reading at night. In addition, its low power consumption means you can get 15 or 16 hours on a single charge. 2001 also saw the release of Moby Pocket across all major platforms, including Scion, Palm and Pocket PC. It initially supported text, Palm doc files, the new Moby format, and later iterations also supported HTML. The Moby Pocket Reader software quickly gained popularity as it had a lot of advanced functions. You could auto scroll, which we'd seen for a long time, but you could also rotate the screen and now you could change background colors. While not so useful on a monochrome screen, if you were reading in color, then this could be 
very useful. It also supported bookmarks, hyperlinks, and of course, images. And while this new Mobi format was going to supersede the original Palm Dock, which started the whole thing, Palm would continue to be the dominant e-reader in the market for some time yet. From 1997 to 2004, dedicated e-readers had only a very small proportion of the market. Most people choosing to buy a PDA of some description and read on that instead. By 2004, production of devices with keyboards such as handheld PCs and Scions had ceased. Consumers had spoken and slate style devices were the future. VHS versus Betamax anyone? Color screens on these devices had become the norm, with the last monochrome Cassiopeia, the E15, being released in 1999, and the last Sony Clear with a monochrome screen, the SL10, being released in 2004. Unfortunately, with these colour screens, while they were brilliant for viewing photos and videos, and making the whole PDA experience just much more vibrant and engaging, those same colour screens were also associated with eye strain when used for prolonged periods. Period. This is far from ideal when it comes to reading. While a few palms were still available with monochrome screens right up until 2006, giving much better battery life and of course reducing eye strain, if ebooks were going to become the norm, what we really needed was a new display technology. Welcome to 2004 and the release of the Sony Libra. This is the first commercial device to use an e-ink display. E-ink, as you will recall, was patented back in 1996, so we waited a full eight years to get a device using it. The way it works, there are tiny little capsules with black on one side, white on the other, and when you put them in a charged electric field, they will spin the appropriate direction. This means that power is only needed when changing the image, and because of that, battery life is through the roof. In addition, because you are using capsules that are literally painted black and white, the contrast is very high, the glare is very low, and it's as close to reading on paper as it's possible to get with an electronic display. In 2005, Amazon finally decided that they needed to move into the ebook market, so they bought Moby Reader. Two years later, in November 2007, and they released the first Kindle, selling out within just five and a half hours. Of course, they bought Moby Reader, so they used the Moby format. That same format that derived from Palm all those years ago. Palm OS, as you can see, was highly influential in creating the ebook market. The form factor was perfect for early e reading. Its fan base created websites like Memoware with the help of the Gutenberg project bringing ebooks to the masses. The Mobi format used by Amazon Kindles has a direct lineage to the PRC format, which is at the core of Palm OS. Would ebooks have existed without Palm? Of course they would. They're an inevitability. We we can see that from their earliest conception back in 1930. But you can see the influence of Palm not just in ebooks, but also in those many other devices that tried to mimic Palm's success. And the similarities between Palm OS and early iOS devices is very hard to miss. So next time you're reading an ebook, just give a little nod to the old Palm Pilot. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a like and a sub would be very much appreciated. It. Special thanks goes to Lazio Garaznagi, again pronounced terribly, my apologies for that, for suggesting this topic. Big thank you to all you viewers, subscribers, commenters, and especially to the supers and the members who directly support this channel. As always, my name's Hugh, this is Handheld Computing, thanks for watching.